examined the manuscript. The information is complete, but does not conform to logical patterns. Flesh can not be mutated into stone and remorphed back to the body once again. Continue the investigation with special attention given to one word. Magica.
concerning the inhabitants of Otherworld. There are many similarities to be found, found parallel to our own society. The individual must be absorbed. The collective must be as one. Feed my head.
is love? When is love? Where is love? Why is love? I must keep my heart from my mind. 
It has been a thousand years since the once powerful planet of Blessing lost its life-giving two suns and countless millennia since the days of the great magicians. An expedition of alien voyagers came upon the now ice-covered sphere, drawn there by an unexplained lone beacon far below the miles of frozen moisture. They unlocked a written history of Blessing from its almost undiscovered tomb. So begins the story of Magica. It was a time of celebration. The Book of Magica and the wizards who had used its spells so wisely for the good of the people were being honored in all the great cities of the world. There was, however, an exception. Where good thrives, evil survives and evil has plans for survival. The celebration of thanks and prosperity would signal the forces of evil side to begin the attack and ultimate capture and destruction of Magica. The spells from the book would be used to turn all of those unwilling to join evil side into statues of stone and send their spirits to other world where they would eventually be assimilated into the energy needed to drive evil side and maintain its power without the necessity of the book and its incantations forever. Defenses were naturally relaxed during the festive preparations 
And although the battle was well fought by both factions, the minions of the dark prevailed. Their assault was well planned and executed to a fault. After overwhelming their initial opposition, they pushed on to the sacred ground upon which the Book of Magic arrested. They possessed a much weaker form of magic themselves, and although it would be normally quite useless against the strength of Magicka, the inability of the wizards to gather themselves together in time, coupled with the perfect timing and determination of the attackers, spelled doom for the book and its followers. The leader of the insurrection was the high priest and executioner known as Shadowcast. His presence could make the naughtiest of children become obedient and inspire great fear among the adult population. This man, most vile, would now be ruler of all and answerable to none. His reign would plunge blessing into eternal darkness and prepare the way for the coming of his master, Astaroth the Grand Duke of Hell. The capture of Magicka did not, however, mean that Shadowcast had finally reached his goal. He must now find and conquer Blessing's Grand Wizard and legendary hero, Ariel. Ariel, who defeated Evilside time and again with his understanding and use of Magicka's spells. He would be the last stumbling block to total domination. Ariel had removed himself from the general population in anticipation of everlasting peace, and now he devoted all of his energy to meditation and praise of his God. Lately, though, he had been visited by many temptations in his dreams. Promises of pleasure, riches, and power raced through his sleeping mind. All these lures had been placed there by Shadowcast, hoping to avoid confrontation between this dominant man and his own villainous forces. Ariel, however, had resisted these solicitations and was now warned of some impending danger. He managed to make his way to the sacred ground by cloaking his identity with simple spells, only to be discovered just before his attempt to rescue the Book of Magicka, but not before he was able to memorize the most important of Magicka's charms, the spell of restoration. The ceremony of thanksgiving was now directed toward the transmission of spirits to other world. One by one, the good souls of blessing were turned to stone and sent on to their grisly fate, until only the noble Ariel remained. The spectacle that followed was meant to degrade Ariel and raise the courage of the cowardly supplicants of evil side. But true to his indomitable bearing, he promised to return and banish evil side forever. Then he was gone. The horrors of other world are now revealed to the masses huddled together for some small measure of comfort. First, the adults were separated from their children amid cries and pleas for help. Next, the old ones were taken away and assigned to a place very near the assimilation site. They were guarded by monstrous, misshapen denizens of this mist-shrouded netherland, who constantly harangued the inmates with promises of pain and extermination. Intermittent bursts of flame shot up from jagged cracks in the ground, threatening to consume anyone in its path. Shrieks of torment could be heard piercing the murky atmosphere, further unnerving the petrified captives. Only one seemed unaffected by all the inflicted fear and turmoil. Ariel's strength and determination soon pacified the men and women with whom he was confined. When they all became more calm and subdued, he began to speak to them softly, as an adult to his children. Long ago you entrusted me to protect the Book of Magicka and to be faithful to its special purpose. It must seem that I have failed you and condemned us all to oblivion, but fear not. This hell is only a test of your faith and resolve. 
the power of Magicka did not vanish in fire. On the third day, I will evoke the spell of restoration. United, we shall return to blessing, and armed with the strength of Magicka, we will be triumphant. Many will perish, but Magicka and our souls cannot be restored until three days have passed. Take heart, my friends. Victory awaits you. Even magic has its limitations, and as Ariel explained to his flock, the spell could not be activated until a waiting period of at least three days. One third of the souls of Blessing would be melded into the evil side collective before Ariel could be effective with the words of restoration. The old ones were the first to go. Cries of encouragement and hope were shouted to the condemned as they trudged slowly to their fate. One by one, they were thrown into the assimilation chamber where a blinding blue spark gave evidence of their demise. With each burst, Ariel's heavy heart ached with guilt for his part in this slaughter of his charges. If only he had not become so complacent, he above all should have never let this tragedy transpire. In the compound holding the young adults, an insurrection of sorts was occurring. A boy of 17 years called Chalice was urging an uprising among his captured companions. Futile though it was, it earned Chalice a place in the cell adjoining Ariel's. His rantings and ravings were soon quelled by Ariel's quiet urging, and the two settled into serious conversation. Ariel knew his time of assimilation was near, and only hoped it would not be scheduled before the three-day waiting period for restoration was ended. Shadowcast wanted to personally oversee Ariel's termination, but couldn't abandon his duties on Blessing until all was secure. Would there be enough time? Ariel realized some of his own strong qualities in Chalice and decided that this was an opportunity not to be lost. He instructed Chalice to remove all anger from his mind and hate from his heart. Only the pure could receive and transmit this most important of spells. Convinced that this young man was ready, he joined with his spirit and gave him these words, Sanasha, Gorath, Solus Arcana, words that would resurrect the masses if delivered correctly and in time. Over two days had passed before Shadowcast was ready for travel to Otherworld to deliver Ariel to his fate. His journey through Otherworld was marked by what could pass for cheers if they weren't shouted from the mouths of utterly inhuman shapes and forms. Upon his arrival, he instructed the guards to take him straight to Ariel. Once there, he announced with great satisfaction that he would personally supervise Ariel's execution in a matter of hours. Nearby, Chalice loudly voiced his objection to this treatment of his newly met hero and was rewarded by kicks and punches until he could no longer speak. Ariel's heart sank. Had he misjudged Chalice and entrusted his people's future to a reckless youth? Ariel's mind wandered to his own younger days. He too had been restless and foolhardy, but in time had outgrown these traits and become the adored leader of Blessing. He wondered if Chalice had yet experienced love. Ariel himself had turned his back on the beautiful and innocent Annika. She was his intended from birth, but he couldn't let love for this saintly child cloud his duties to Blessing and the book. One hour remained in the wait for restoration. Ariel's hopes were soaring. Surely Shadowcast would fail once again. But as that thought surfaced, so did Evil Side's dark leader. Ariel was led away with head held high. But as he passed Chalice, 
He gave just the slightest nod, a gesture that wasn't lost on the youth. Ariel was then taken to the assimilation chamber and strapped to the cross-like structure in the middle of the room. Seconds were all that stood in the way of resurrection or destruction. Shadowcast walked to Ariel, presumably to gloat one last time to his old nemesis. Ariel welcomed the time that would be wasted, but at the last moment, Shadowcast seemed to reconsider and raised his arm and signaled for the end to begin. The arm dropped, and with crackle and hiss, Ariel was no more. Shadowcast and his minions erupted with joy, never again to be slaves, now to be masters. Chalice heard the cheering and knew that Ariel had passed without time to summon the spell. Now only he could influence the future. He heard the rattling of armor and realized they were coming for him. Soon the guards appeared and dragged the struggling Chalice from his confinement. One of his jailers struck him a mighty blow across the face and suddenly all his anger left him. He was sure of what he must do. Thunder starts from silence and he would be thunder. Chalice was taken to the chamber and secured to the cross. Shadowcast approached him and asked if he had any last thing to say before assimilation. Chalice smiled and said he did. Then, with an evil laugh, Shadowcast raised his arm and announced that his question was only a final killing joke. It was now or never. As the arm fell in signal, Chalice shouted out the spell, Sanasha, Gorath, Solus, Arcana, and all hell actually broke loose. Chalice and the good folk of Blessing were bathed in an incredible rush of light. Shadowcast and all his wicked throng writhed in agony in the darkness they were spawned from as the fierce illumination sought them out and consumed each troll, ogre, and gargoyle in a horrible melting frenzy. Shadowcast, hiding in the last black space to be found, watched the light creep irresistibly toward him. At the last moment, he cloaked his body with his unpriestly robe and muttered what sounded like an oath as the light touched the cloth. The robe erupted into flame and then there was nothing. Surely Shadowcast was also consumed by fire, but that tale would not yet be told. Now, as each remaining citizen of Blessing was transported instantly back to their home, they found themselves standing among thousands of recognizable stone statues. These monuments represented their fallen comrades and would ever be a lasting testament to the dangers of evil and the power of Magicka. Now came the time of mourning. Funeral pyres brightened the night sky for weeks, and songs of sorrow could be heard across the land long after the flames had sputtered and died. When the prolonged periods of grieving had ended, the citizens and their council directed attention to the task of anointing a new leader and protector of the restored Book of Magicka. The choice seemed a simple one. Chalice had resurrected the populace and the book, but many questioned his youth and inexperience. The debate raged on as the time of choosing approached. The candidates were summoned to the sacred place. Eloquent speeches were made on behalf of them all. Only Chalice lacked a champion, and it seemed certain that he would be passed over. Will anyone speak for the boy? asked the council. The question was greeted by silence as the judges turned away to cast their votes. Then the quiet was broken. A handsome woman with golden hair, now flecked with traces of gray, spoke. Chalice must be chosen. 
This is the secret I have carried with me for all these years. Although I was once rebuffed by my only true love, Ariel, our brief union produced the young man standing before you. Ariel was never to know that he had sired this free spirit, but he will live on through his son's achievements if you now find him worthy. So spoke Annika, mother of Chalice. The decision was now reached quickly. Annika's revelation left little doubt in the minds of the counselors that Chalice should indeed succeed his father. Evil side had been defeated. Shadowcast was hopefully destroyed. Chalice had been chosen to lead his people. And despite the huge number of casualties, the old way of life began again. But evil does not easily die. Shadowcast did indeed survive and persist in his attempts to challenge and conquer Blessing. Great battles would be fought, brave heroes would rise to the occasion and legends were created. There was, of course, the unforgettable war of the Dark Peace when Chalice Cup... Ah, but that's another story. <laughs>